Next up is Sophie Serafino. Sophie is a violinist, wife, mom, and president of Every Woman Foundation. Here is Sophie Serafino. dominant musical genre is electronically manufactured pop and perfection is so important that many social media users photoshop their images before they post them where those who stand out are often shunned, bullied and harassed. Is real freedom of speech and self-expression at risk and have we created our own culture of fear? I grew up in Sydney, Australia and I've studied music since I can remember. I was extremely hyperactive as a child and this was a great outlet for me. I was always told to be expressive, but I was often confused by this as I had many limitations placed on me that is typical of a traditional violin uh, training. According to dancer and choreographer, the great Martha Graham, there is a vitality, a life force, a boom, an energy and a quickening that is translated through you into action. And because there is only one of you in all time, this expression is unique. And if you block it, it will never exist through any other medium and it will be lost. By expressing ourselves, we benefit both ourselves and others. The simple fact that we post on social media in such a short form of expression shows how much we value the opinion of others and how shallow our communication has become. We're not really connecting, we're demonstrating ourselves. The act of, wow, that's fast. The act of posting a photo is for the benefit of someone else, and we often hide our real selves elsewhere. In our culture today, often perfection is the key. We punish and abuse those who are not perfect, least of all ourselves, and we strive for the same level of perfection we expect from others, and we've created many ways to ensure that image is perfect. In fact, in our culture today, artists like Aretha Franklin and Maria Callas would not have existed. The beauty of true artistic expression is dumbed down into formulas. Art and music help us humanize that which is different to us and see other perspectives. It's a form of communication about ourselves and others that should never be underestimated. Homogenizing our culture will only lead to disasters of all kinds. Music and art has long been used as a method of control. Soviet composer Dmitry Shostakovich was so enraged that his music had to be approved by the government before it's released that he put secret codes in his music with using E flat and D flat, which in solfege is des and s, which is his initials, to demonstrate his indignance at this suppression. Self-expression has long been considered a sign of one's own freedom. When I started out as a musician, I went to great lengths to escape what I considered oppression. I left a private girls' school and went to the big city to play my own music, and in a very short time I was involved in drugs and was assaulted. I moved back home at the age of 19 and stayed indoors for months. Before I'd even finished school, it had seemed like my life had gone up in smoke. Healing itself took years, and later, at the age of 22, at one of my very first tentative performances, after that episode, it was at an International Women's Day event. I met a variety of women of all ages, different backgrounds. I watched short films, heard music and poetry, and everyone was so accepting of each other and their expressions. I, it changed the way I thought about women, about women working together and accepting each other's creativity. And it challenged the way that I expressed myself as a woman. <clears throat> Later, I was working in Paris, France, and I asked a group of artists I met along the way to join me in Paris for a show we decided to create a women's artist collective. And on returning to Australia, I asked another group of Aussie artists to get together and we put on a show for International Women's Day. We called it Every Woman Festival and the funds went to a small shelter called Lou's Place. After the show, the staff suggested that we give singing and songwriting lessons to the ladies in the shelter. And I didn't realize how powerful this would be until after a couple of years of giving lessons at various places, I saw one of my students singing in the choir at a church service I attended and afterwards she told me that the classes had changed her life. 
Not always a fearless leader, however. In 2012, a year after moving to Calgary, I faced a marriage breakup and became a target of what would be a two-year campaign of bullying and harassment. I received abusive messages almost daily, was impersonated on email, social media, and Skype. My life again went up in smoke in a big way. I felt like a bull in a china shop and as if I was facing the most impossible task to start my life over again. For the second time, I wanted to disappear. I stopped writing, I stopped songwriting, I stopped playing my violin for fun. I only played when I had to. I had become afraid of sharing anything I thought I knew would aid my healing. I thought, screw self-expression, I just want to be safe. I was lucky to be surrounded by a group of amazing Calgary women. And with my faith, I started to get back in one piece. And together we launched Every Woman Festival in 2013 in Calgary and 2014 in Edmonton. We called our group Every Woman Foundation, so that would encompass all the activities we're involved in. In 2014, I am really happy to say that I remarried and we now have a six month old son, so I can say it was a happy ending after all. Woo! Our programs, I feel like I'm racing because I'm trying to keep up with the slides. Our programs focus on teaching and self expression through songwriting, through creative writing, and positive self talk. We so often take for granted the skills we've learnt and the ability to express ourselves. And those that have taken our programs, whatever their level, age, or challenges, the results are still the same. When we create an environment in which people feel comfortable to share what makes them happy or unhappy or excited or what their favourite memories are, it can help them reconnect with themselves and who they are and the results can be life-changing. It can also create peace. In the process of developing Every Woman Foundation, I met a lady who held workshops in an area of conflict called the Israeli-Palestinian Sisterhood for Peace. Women from both sides met, created art together, and this act of sharing was a humanizing one, and this was perhaps, perhaps one small step towards changing the face of the enemy through this activity they participated in together. Art, music, and poetry are ways of expressing oneself in ways that are not easy in regular speech. In healing traditions, the concept of self-expression tends somehow to always be considered only a process of catching up with past emotion and experience. However, the real goal is prompt and spontaneous expression. Expression in communication is the essence of life. According to Andy Warhol, don't think about making art, just get it done. Let everyone else decide if it's good or bad, and while they're deciding, make even more art. Everyone has something unique to give the world, and I believe that we can create the world of our choosing if we decide to stand out and be our true selves, and create a world in which love and truth win over hatred and the pursuit of unattainable perfection as we discover who we truly are. And in the world of one of my favorite artists, express yourself, even if it blows up in your face. Thank you.